So today we're talking some Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, first edition. Uh, in today's topic, what I'd like to go over is something that's um, a little bit different, and I'm looking at alignments. So we need to look at what alignments are, and it's more than just a morality system, it's also religious systems and political systems and structures and everything that falls in, in between. Uh, so we'll uh, start off with that and then we'll work our way through with a bit of an intro of the different alignments and then perhaps some examples and, and why it's, it's so tough sometimes to work out these things. So alignments come in different flavours. Uh, there are two parts to an alignment, although I suppose there's a third one hidden in the middle, but generally you're looking at the character's attitude to laws and discipline and whether or not things are ordered, as well as the opposite of disorder and rules getting in the way and tearing down systems and so on. The other part is pretty much about the character self. If the character prefers to um, defend others and work for others and be selfless or a more selfish attitude and look after themselves or have not a lot of regard for others, are a little bit cold or callous, are a little bit unfeeling, unkind, they can all fit in the other side of the scale. There's also that um, one that fits sort of in the middle neutral, which can end up being either in the first part of uh, the way they regard laws. And so if they don't carry the way where the laws are followed or broken, or in the other way where they don't particularly care whether something is benefiting mankind, people kind, elven kind, good or bad, in a longer way. So this all makes up the nine alignment types where you've got lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil, neutral good, true neutral, neutral evil, and chaotic good, chaotic neutral, and chaotic evil. When um, the players have chosen an alignment, generally it could be related to their deity, or pantheon of deities, uh, or their own political system structure and so on, or the, even by class and relationships. So the the DM is meant to keep together uh, so like a chart or a graph in the more strictest sense in order to be able to gauge on which way the wind is blowing when it comes to the alignment and the alignment shifts. And from there you might have a paladin that's potentially heading towards the wrong way, and they might get visions from their deity saying, beware or go back, or even from a cleric. If a uh, healing god is uh, not pleased with all of the, the fighting elements that the cleric is doing, they might send a, a brief message just to say, yeah, let's just think about what we're trying to do here. We're trying to promote the, the peace and so on. And so that's what the DM is supposed to try and keep track of for every player character. And for the most part, the non-player characters just will run with their alignments based on their motivations and based on their attitudes from there. And it can get tricky, especially when alignments can be, um, from a certain point of view, to uh, do the famous quote, which is really important. So that the um, some people would say that the, uh, the alignments are in the eyes of the DM, because if the DM thinks, nope, that's not lawful, or yep, that's lawful. And, and that's why it's good to have as many examples as to what could possibly be and what could possibly be not. And so what we've just done next is put together some basic ideas. Because if we get some classes together and there's always the element of, oh, your character is evil, so therefore you must be evil and you must be wanting to always work against the... the theme of the party, which is not the case. So if we just have a look at some of the different alignment types and just some classic examples. So lawful good we think is an easy one because it's law and order and good for people 
and good for all, but it actually falls in different ways that these can be maintained. So if we have a look at, for instance, like Captain America is a lawful good character, nobody would deny that, and Superman is lawful good, but then you've also got elements where Batman can be considered lawful good because of his uh, code that he sticks to, and he's disciplined, and he's got all of these laws that he stands for himself, and he's always working towards the benefit of others. It's many instances of when a character like Batman has uh, gone out of his way to make sure that the right thing has been done. Uh, same thing with uh, Captain America. Captain America can't just sign an agreement without uh, you know, putting his heart and soul into it, whereas some other characters would say, yep, let's just sign it and move on and ignore it and so on. And that, that's sort of the, where some of these things fall into play, where you just go, well, they make for interesting gameplay, but you don't want it to form too many conflicts. And that's the sort of balance that the DM needs to try and work out as they sort of think, well, all right, what are we looking at here? And will this character work with that character? And so on. So for the most part, many characters would work together because they have a common goal. And more lawful characters would work together and even good characters would work together, but there'd still be arguments and uh, points of philosophy they need to, to work through. Lawful neutral is the type of alignment that um, soldiers, bureaucrats, people that would say, yep, you know, just following orders, and we've got rules and regulations and we're strictly by the book. And, and that's an extreme element of lawful neutral. There are still areas where people want to do good, but following the rules, they'll do as best as they could. And this is sort of where the first edition AD&D idea of tendencies come in. You can have a lawful neutral with a tendency towards good, which means, okay, you're lawful neutral, but you're more on the closer to good side. And it's a good concept. It does make things a lot more murkier. But generally, if you're lawful neutral, you've got your own code, you've got a code, you've got rules, you've got regulations, you've got things. And this is where, as oddly as it sounds, most thieves that are attached to a thieves guild would belong to. Because they've got rules that they have to follow. If they don't follow them, they get expelled. If they're not part of a thieves guild and they're in operation, they might get killed. And so they have to be part of the thieves guild and they have to work within the boundaries. And that's where lawful neutral comes in. Looking at lawful evil, lawful evil is the type of character that still has rules, regulations, and still has all of those things, but it's quite selfish, quite more, it's all about me. And, and this is where it can get very, very tricky to try and pin down, because a very intelligent, lawful, evil character with a good charisma could very well be a great villain mastermind behind a great many problems. Because they're smart enough to stay within the boundaries of the law, but just twitchy enough to be able to, to, to try and, and squeeze everything for themselves and to push people out of the way. And if you've got a, a lawful good ruler that uh, might have a lawful evil subordinate, that's when things get really tricky. And that also can make some good gameplay as the players have come across this guy who's in the confidant of the king, and he manages to always be there to, to just twist the knife, just to make their lives a little bit more painful. But, you know, that's lawful evil. There are some great characters that are lawful evil, and they can be um, such as like Lex Luthor from the DC Universe, Doctor Doom, and so on. Their word is their bond, they've got their rules, and they know what they're doing, they live within these boundaries, but it's all about them. So, if we get into the neutral good element, you've got a character that's good, that wants to do the right thing, but isn't concerned with like, boundaries, and is happy to say, yep, I'll sign that piece of paper that says I'm not going to do this, and then go and do it, because it doesn't matter. And they would generally have their own motivations, but a neutral good just like the same thing in terms of the neutral evil. Laws and uh, 
whether it's studying laws or law or chaos, it is irrelevant, completely irrelevant. And the idea is that it's all about what they want to achieve at the other end. So the, the characters such as like um, the old school Dirty Harry, uh, Wolverine, uh, the Punisher, they all fit in a neutral good element where they're ready to follow the laws and rules as much as possible, but you know, their total aim is to just do the right thing and just to be good, and it doesn't matter if they break laws along the way. And on the flip side, the neutral evil character is one that is almost purely selfish. They don't care about anything. They will break every bond, every vow, every agreement in order to suit themselves at that point in time. And that's the sort of level that true evil sits in, in some cases. So neutral evil are pure evil, and you're looking at something like um, Red Skull, as an example, of neutral evil, where he's willing to break every bond, every vow, uh, and make, a, uh, make an agreement and then break it, and just do whatever it takes to, for his own selfish purposes. Cowder Good uh, um, is an example of a character that is happy to uh, live outside the rules, uh, almost intentionally, uh, go against the rules, almost intentionally, but has a heart of gold. So this is where a character like Robin Hood puts it, where willing to fight the establishment, go against the establishment, and take on the uh, the rules and the laws of the land in order to do the good thing. Uh, Han Solo falls in this category as well, because he's a scoundrel with a heart of gold, and he's really not a bad guy, and he does whatever he can to actually help people. It's just that uh, he lives on the outside and the fringe of the, of the uh, outside of the law, and he's happy to be out there. So you'll, the classic example that's in, are often around is things like they call them the, you know, like the frontiersmen who are willing to just live away from civilization and just do what they want to do, compulsive, but they're still good. They still want to do the right thing and be the right sort of people. So chaotic neutral is very, very impulsive, but with no idea of good or evil. They don't care about that sort of thing. So the chaotic neutral character can be erratic, it can be random, it can be humorous, it can be just plain annoying. So the, the chaotic neutral character is definitely a character that is left best, best left for the uh, NPCs to be played. And they will do whatever they want based on how they feel at that time. And even self-interest isn't something that they're interested in. So just give them a bunch of dynamite. They don't have plans. They don't scheme. They're not schemers. They just do what they want to do, when they do it, and how they do it. And this leads us to chaotic evil. Chaotic evil is they're willing to break all the laws, all the rules, and they don't care about anyone except for themselves. The whole dog-eat-dog, -dog, yeah, if I didn't do it to them, they'd do it to me type of arrangements. And they're often portrayed as bullies. And a chaotic evil despot, would be so paranoid and so full of fear that the underlings are trying to take over that they would be constantly trying to keep them in their place or keep them squabbling against each other while they're um, you know, maintaining that power to control. And that's what it's all about. So they will use the... Uh, they won't have rules, but they will just be reacting to everything and be emotional and potentially just bad, as they're assuming that everyone's just out to get them all the time. Then we get to that middle ground right in the middle, the neutral. Now this is really hard for any player characters to try and maintain, and that's why you think of it in terms of a tree. A tree is neutral. It doesn't care about anything, it just grows and it just does what it does. Animals with animal intelligence wandering around, when they're hungry they eat, they might eat each other, they might not eat each other, they'll just do what they need to do when they do it, because there's no other force. This is more an esoteric environment. You're looking at the real cosmic stuff being in the neutral. So in Dungeons and Dragons, especially in the first edition, druids are supposed to be neutral, and 
they live with, with nature. They love nature. All they want is nature to grow. And that drive to adventure could be anything. And this is where if they got told, right, there's an imbalance, do this, then they need to work to get that balance back. So if there's too much evil in the area, they will work for the forces of good. If there's too much good in the area, they won't do anything to stop the evil from spreading. It doesn't mean they'll join the evil, it just means that they won't do much to stop the spread, because as far as they're concerned, it's about the balance. And this is where, to get a druid up and running and to try and keep something that's going, if somebody wants to be a true neutral character, and the DM allows it, you have to have a strong deity and a strong sort of like cosmic entity almost to just highlight there's this that needs to happen in order to bring everything back. And then that becomes their mission, their goal, their focus. So overall, for player characters to try and pick an alignment, it's a matter of be nice to the DM. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun to play the more evil characters, but often uh, they just get in the way of a good time by everybody to get along and have a good good evening's play. Because eventually someone's going to say, yeah, but I'm playing in character, which is the worst thing that anyone wants to hear. They don't want to hear that. So next is just a couple of steps about some of the differences between the alignments and why they're not always the same as you'd think. So, as an example of some lawful evil versus lawful evil, we have James Bond versus Scaramanga. And that's classic, where you've got James Bond, who is paid to kill people. He is an assassin, and that's what he does. And Scaramanga, who's paid to kill people, and he's an assassin, and that's what he does. But James insists that he only kills bad people and so therefore he doesn't consider himself as bad. But if you watch all the James Bond films, you can see that his regard for others is quite low. He might have a few friends, he might have a few relationships that are close, but for the most part, people are just expendable items or assets to be used and discarded, which is just the nature of his business, but also that area of, of, and it does fit in that area of evil, by the Dungeons and Dragons sense. Doesn't mean that he's a terrible human being. Eh, people will like, people will dislike, but a paladin would play with that. And there's plenty of examples where lawful good characters would work with lawful evil characters. So I've tried to not get too preachy, and tried to not get too, this is how it works, don't do it any other way because it's so subjective and it's so um, individual and it's really between the, the different players. If you, if you can come up with an example of why you think that the equaliser is lawful good and that's how you want to play your character, that's great. As far as, you know, you might say, well, no, he's neutral good because he follows the rules as required but then he goes and does what he needs to do to get, to, uh, get the job done. When asked to, to get something, you know, he does it. And he'll look for permission of uh, forgiveness later in terms of, of doing things. And, and that's where you sort of have to sometimes keep an open mind. Is Iron Man lawful good? Is Superman lawful good? Is Batman this? Is the Joker that? And you have to work it all out. Because chaotic neutral, especially like the chaotic neutrals and the chaotic evils, they can get a bit tricksy sometimes. You know, the, uh, the Rebellion Freedom Fighter is chaotic good, but will hang out with chaotic neutral because at that point everyone's thinking the same thing. And the chaotic evil comes in and, and is like, yeah, well, that, let's tear down the system, man, because, you know, it's wrong. But secretly, you're going, yeah, and I'm going to set myself up as king and take it all out. And that's sort of where that whole concept of one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist comes through. So... Hopefully, I haven't uh, confused the situation too much, but I'm just trying to sort of highlight how if you've got a thief or a fighter, even if it's the same law, even if it's the same alignment, they don't have to be the same alignment. Like they don't have to be exactly the same. They can be slightly different, and that's a good thing, and that's what we like. 
you know, you want room to move and you want room for role playing. Or I want to play a character that's like this and then work it backwards from there. And so this is where some, you know, some DMs have their own ideas and the players have to work with the DMs to come up with the background and stories. And it's all good. So hopefully I've created some ideas and uh, keep the conversation going. I'm just trying this in a different format, so hopefully this works, <laughs> and we'll take it from there. So, all right, well, thank you very much for listening, watching, and hopefully, if you uh, like it, then uh, yeah, the click the like and subscribe, have a look, read through some stuff, let me know what you think, and give me some examples of what you think fit in uh, some of these areas of lawful good, lawful neutral, especially some of the more tricky tricky ones like uh, the chaotic neutrals and evils. Anyway, well, thank you very much, and I appreciate you guys listening and watching. Thanks.